Hello everybody and welcome to lesson number 15 in the Python tutorial series. My name is Steve and today we're going to evaluate uh, the importation of the time module as well as some uh, tips and tricks to pause the execution of your program. Now this is the last lesson that we're going to be doing before our second project of the series and the project that we're going to be doing is called In the Realm of the Dragon and it's based on a uh, there's a book available on Amazon. It's also uh, an open source book that's available for free on the internet called Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python by Al Swigert. And that's a book that when I first started learning program programming gave me some good ideas and, and helped me along. So we'll talk more about that next uh, <clears throat> during the next lesson and I'll provide the link in the description. But one of the things you'll notice when you're writing that program is or, or any program for that matter, is it all executes at once. There's very little pauses with the exception of when the program pauses to take user input. And sometimes you don't necessarily want it to execute at once. You want to build some drama into your games and you want to pause the execution of the program for several seconds and maybe time some messages that are printed out to the user. And that's what the... Uh, topic of today's lessons will be. We're going to import the time module and use a function called sleep that will effectively pause the execution of our program for a set amount of time as well as some other things that we'll use in the upcoming project. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at the time module in Python. In order to provide an example of how the time module and the sleep function work, we're going to write a small program over here in our programming window. And what I wanted to do is I just wanted to print 10 numbers in succession. And the way I'm going to do that is with a series of 10 print statements. So I know this is kind of boring to watch, but we're going to throw together a total of 10 print statements. So print 8, print 9, and print and when we execute this program, as you can imagine, over in the Python shell, it's going to print 1 through 10. But if you watch the execution of this program, uh, Python executes the commands as quickly as your computer will allow. And for most modern computers, it's almost instantaneous. If I keep running this program right here, you can tell that it's printing 1 through 10 in succession. But it's printing so quickly, it might as well just be printing it as all as one big block of code. Now I might want 1 through 10 to print out at a slower pace. I want, might want my user to be able to read 1, read 2, read 3 in order without everything coming up at once. The way I'm going to do that is with the time module. Earlier we looked at the random module. In order to create a random module we had to import random up here at the top by typing import random. The next module we're going to look at is one called time. So instead of typing import random, you're still going to use the import keyword and we're going to import time. We're going to test that to make sure it works simply by executing this program again. We don't get an error message so we know that time has been imported correctly. Now there's a bunch of different functions you can use uh, associated with the time module. One of the cool things time allows you to do is it can return a current date, a uh, current time, and you can do some things with your programs there. We're only interested in one function in the time module right now and that's called sleep. The other things that, that calculate time and date and stuff like that we'll get into later, but it's not important for what we're doing right now. So there is a command called, a uh, function called sleep. And the use of this is time, just like when we did random, you had to type random.randint and provide the arguments. We're going to be using the sleep function, which is part of time, so we have to type time.sleep, and we have to provide a number of seconds we want our program to pause. And I'm going to pause it for half a second after one, time.sleep for one second after two, and time.sleep for half a second after three, and then for 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 will all print as, as quickly as they can. When we execute this program, if you look over on the shell, we print 1, pause, 2, pause, 3, pause, and then it prints the rest of the numbers. And now I can easily adjust the amount of time that the program pauses its execution. So maybe I want it to last a little bit longer. We're going to change these to 2 seconds each. And then after 4, I want a time.sleep for 4 seconds. And then I want 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 to print as quickly as possible. You can see in the execution of the program now, the program will only execute as quickly as I want it to. That time.sleep allows me to put in artificial pauses. Where this becomes useful is maybe we're not printing numbers, but I'm going to do a uh, like a a horror game or a text adventure where I want to build some suspense. So maybe my first statement is a uh, print you look into the dark closet. And then I'm going to print you hear a s strange noise. And finally we're going to print but there is nothing inside. Those three lines of code right there, if I print them, it prints all three lines and you're not building any suspense as you're developing this program. The user can already see what's going to happen and it may be better to pause the execution of this program. So the way I'm going to do that is with a time.sleep and I'm going to put five seconds between each line being printed. Now when I execute this program, I'm building a little bit of suspense into the execution. You look into the dark closet, you hear a strange noise, oh my gosh, what could it be? It could be anything, but I can't read it yet, and then I get the, but there's nothing inside. The time.sleep command is a simple command that allows you to pause your execution for a fixed amount of time allowing you to con better control the flow of the program as it's running. And while the time.sleep command is all well and good, sometimes you want your program to stop executing until the user provides some input or until the user presses a key. Uh, that's pretty easy to do as well. In fact, it's something that inherently is available in Python. Remember that the input command pauses the execution of the program until the user provides input. We can use that to our advantage by simply replacing time.sleep with an input statement. So I can input, now you notice I'm not saving this input to any variable. I don't really care what the user types in, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say like, you know, press enter to continue. So what's going to happen now is the program will execute this first line, it will sleep for five seconds, it will print, you hear a strange noise, and then it will encounter this input statement. Oh, we've got three S's there, spell that correctly. It's going, to, it's going to encounter this input statement and it will run, press enter to continue. And we don't need to save any of this input, we're really just doing this for an artificial pause. The user could theoretically type in whatever they want, but as soon as they hit enter, the program will execute again. So we're putting in a, a message that asks the user to press enter to continue. Now when our program executes, you look into the dark closet, it pauses because of the time.sleep command. You hear a strange noise, and now it's saying press enter to continue, and the program will not continue until I press enter. When I do press enter, it prints the final line of the program, but there's nothing inside. And if I even want to add a little bit more style to this, I can flank this with time.sleep commands and say like time.sleep3, time.sleep, we'll call this 2. And what will happen now is the first line will print, it will pause 5 seconds, it will print the second line, give the user a little bit of time to read it, and then ask them to press enter to continue. When they press enter, it will give them a little bit of time to focus on the screen and then finally print that there is nothing inside. So let's go ahead and execute this program. You look into the dark closet, pause. You hear a strange noise, pause. Press enter to continue. And when I press enter, it encounters the sleep too. 
and then prints the final line. It's, it's nothing really amazing as far as programming goes, and it's something that's really simple. However, it adds some polish to your finished programs, particularly in this stage when we're writing mainly like text adventures and text-based programs. It adds a little bit of style, and it makes it a little bit cooler, and it makes it kind of a, a more finished product. And hopefully when you do the In the Realm of the Dragon game, which of course is going to be the next lesson, you'll be uh, able to write something that you're a little bit more proud of, something that you, you can show off to people and it will have a little bit more style and substance instead of printing everything up all at once. And that's really all there is to lesson number 15 right there. In fact, I think it's probably one of the more simple lessons that we've done. But it's just some uh, tips and tricks using the time.sleep command and using the input function to control the flow and execution of your program and make it a little bit more stylized. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and throw those into the uh, YouTube comment section. I will answer any comments that you put in there and I can help you with any of your programs that you've been trying to do or anything that you've been working on as a result of following this tutorial series. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.